Davey D hanging out with you this afternoon. And boy, we got a lot of superstars and people that are on the front line of the struggle that we've been talking to all week. And among them, on our phone lines, our distinguished brother and good friend, Dr. Cornell West. How you doing, my man? Oh, what a blessing to talk to you, my brother. I want to salute you for the work that you do, brother. Fusing the struggle for justice with the funk and the fun, man. There's a lot of things I could talk to you about, but there's a couple of things that immediately come to mind. First, last week, uh, you uh, were in Arizona, or you were doing some things with Puente, uh, you know, about the whole thing with the immigration and all that. Oh, yeah. And I want to know if you could speak to that. And I'm asking just because earlier this week we saw a show, we, we saw a film, a documentary on COINTELPRO. And what was surprising was how much we didn't know how COINTEL was impacting the Latino community and how it had decimated people and killed people and a whole lot of things we often just associated with the Black Panthers only. And I, I just kept thinking to myself, I said, you know, I don't think we're fully aware of the atrocities and, and, the, and the pain that various communities we should be breaking bread with are going through, and hence we're not as united as we should be. No, you're absolutely right, the Brother Cointel Pro targeted progressives across the board. They were predominantly black and brown, but they were, it, it certainly included our Latino brothers and sisters. But of course, we shouldn't forget about our dear brother Howard Zinn. We just we just got his FBI file and found out that he was at the highest index, which meant if there was a state of emergency, he would be in jail immediately with no trial. So that, I mean, the, the, the COINTELPRO is very serious. And I'm glad that you highlighted our Latino brothers and sisters. I was in Arizona all day on Saturday with Brother Pablo Alvarado and Brother Chris Freeman and Salvador and, uh, and Ofra and all the other brothers and sisters there. I was there at Tent City. We we're working with the day laborers. I was there at Esperanza School. Of course, North High School is where the major event took place. But also there at the Embassy of Indigenous Peoples with Brother Tupac. Tupac is one of the leaders of the Tona Tierra, which is a leading institution in Arizona and, 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 and based in Phoenix, of course, but it's on indigenous people's lands, but now called Phoenix. They talk about let's legalize Arizona as opposed to uh, uh, the, the, some of these uh, the vicious laws being passed. Well, we have to keep in mind this, though, brother, that Latina brothers and sisters have been up against forms of terror and trauma and stigma for a long time, and we haven't accented this. And I don't think we can talk seriously about suffering in the nation unless we talk about red suffering, unless we talk about black suffering, unless we talk about brown suffering as well as white and yellow. So it's the question of trying to unify, to bring together, to constitute coalitions and alliances so that we can try to push back these deeply reactionary and to some degree crypto-fascist policies against our day labor brothers and sisters who are often Latino. Arizona now is the front line for the struggle for rights and liberties. It is ground zero for the struggle for justice in the nation. You know, what do you say to people that come from the civil rights era? And I, I hate to categorize people, but I would say it seems like folks who are a little bit more well-to-do that might not have gotten as dirty as some of the other folks that really seem to take umbrage with anybody, whether they're gay or brown or anybody who wants to compare or references the civil rights movement. And I'm always like, wait a second, this belongs to everybody. It's like, no, they just don't know. And they have all sorts of reasons and rationales. And then all of a sudden people will take a left turn and sound like Archie Bunker. They shouldn't be here illegally. And I'm like, how can you say this if you come from this era? What, what, where do we make a wrong turn or how pervasive is that sort of thought? Well, we made the wrong term when we associated the black freedom movement with just the interests of black people. The black freedom movement has always been about justice and fairness and respect, and that justice and fairness certainly includes black suffering to be overcome, but it also includes brown and yellow and red and white. 
that Martin Luther King Jr. died connecting the struggle of poor people against a vicious status quo and also a struggle against an imperial war in Vietnam because he loved brown, he loved Vietnamese babies. So it was about justice, and justice is a universal norm. It's a universal ideal. So when people say, well, they can't use the civil rights, civil rights is not owned by anybody. Is justice and fairness and respect owned by anybody? Absolutely not. <laughs> 